Hi, thanks for joining us today. I'm Jeff Turner, the sales channel manager for polypropylene here at McElroy. And I'm Jesse Smith, McElroy University training coordinator. And I'm Anthony Alvarez, McElroy University trainer. Hey, we're so excited to show you this productivity demonstration today with McElroy tools on polypropylene pipe. Now, some of you might have attended last year's session of our productivity demonstration. Anthony was a part of that with me. And we used two Acrobat 160s to fuse six fusions at about 38 to 40 minutes. We had a great time doing that and a lot of people got a lot out of that so this year we wanted to up the game and use six different tools for a productivity demonstration where we'll do seven fusions in about 40 to 45 minutes jesse tell us what we're making so today we'll be building a couple of spool pieces that we will finish hanging in the hangers to make our last fusion with Acrobat 160. So to answer your question, we're not really building anything except a couple spool pieces that will really do a good job of simulating the different types of fusions that you'll encounter on a standard job site. Oh, great. Hey, I'm going to let these two guys go over and start getting ready at their stations because just like qualified operators would do, they've got their system planned out, ready to go to be as productive as possible. In the meantime, We'll Thanks. see you in a little bit, guys. In the meantime, I'm going to show you guys what tools we're going to use during this process. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the features and benefits during the actual session itself. But first, I'm going to show you the Hornet uh, Fusion Outlet Machine, OK? This will do outlets half inch all the way up to 63 millimeter on mains all the way up to 24 inch. We're going to talk a little bit about this, too some of the features when we get there, but this has been a very popular tool. It's also part of the hot tap tool package. Then you've got the Hornet XL. This is the big one. This just came out within the last year and a half or so. The Hornet XL is going to be able to do two inch to six inch fusion outlets on pipe up to 355 millimeter and then up to four inch on pipe up to 24 inch or 630 millimeter. It weighs about the same as the Acrobat, just a little bit more, but uh, it's very easy to fabricate and get in a tight space on a job site. Then our old faithful, it's the Acrobat 160. Of course, we used it last year. Last year, in the six different fusions that we did, one of those was a vertical fusion. It's pretty impressive to be able to do six in about 40 minutes while doing a vertical fusion. This particular case, we're going to take it off the base and put it overhead with this Acrobat Fusion and show you how easy it is to do that. You can do it in about 30 seconds. Another old faithful, the Spider 125 with universal clamping. This is the Series 2. That's what's available now. We're going to do an overhead fusion with that as well, tying it into that spool piece when it's overhead. The Polygon. A lot of you guys are really big fans of this machine out here. Some of you have seen our socially distant learning series about the Polygon. The Polygon does mitered butt fusions, does butt fusions, and you can take the jaws off and use it as a socket fusion machine with spider jaws on it. Again, we're going to talk a little bit more about all the things it can do when we get to the fusion time. But again, the Polygon, great tool. We're excited to show you that. And then Old Faithful, the trusty SmartFab 125, which is the production workhorse of socket fusion. The absolute best socket fusion tool in the business. It's sturdy, it's rugged, it can do half inch all the way up to four inch. We're excited to have this as a part of the presentation and we're gonna show that to you again when we get there. But now, I've walked you through all the machines. There will be a hand tool, there'll be a hand fusion with a chamfer and cold ring tool. We'll be using data loggers as well. In the meantime, Jesse has been over here getting ready, ready for the first fusion. And what are we using first? So the first thing we're going to do is an outlet fusion uh, with the Hornet XL. We're going to do a 63 millimeter outlet on a 125 millimeter main. So I'm going right. to go ahead and get started on that. That's great. So for those of you familiar with our machines, this does have uh, the look of an Acrobat because a lot of the base, uh, we created it with an Acrobat in mind. But what We've been able to do to go up to the different sizes to make sure that we can hold the puck and the outlets in place. We're utilizing the jaws and the inserts that go along with the Acrobat items so you can grab along that puck and be able to make sure you get your fitting and your outlet on the pipe in the right manner. The great thing about it too is at the end after it's finished, you could use this machine to socket fuse and tie in the piece of pipe to the fusion outlet. Here, what Jesse's doing right now, he's got a drill that, that the contractor will provide themselves. There is an adapter that slides easily right into 
The drill slides easily right into the adapter. He's got his drill bit there. He's just loading it in place, and he's going to make his hole. Now, the great thing about the Hornets, the reason why you want to do this with a Hornet and not by hand, nice and easy. The reason why you want to do this with a Hornet and not by hand is because you're going to get a nice, even, straight line down into the pipe. When you do it by hand, you can't always get the drill straight. You can't always get your heater and your heater outlet straight, especially on the larger sizes when the heater gets a little bit heavier with, with the uh, heat adapters on the plate. This helps you manage and distribute the weight evenly across the board so you have a nice, even hole with a square opening and a nice even amount of pressure when you start to put your heat on it. So now Jesse's going to take out the drill. He's going to start to put the puck in with the heat adapter. Yeah, this would be the fitting adapter. So this is the going fitting to adapter to go down and he can start his heat soak now. That mounts right into the same jaws with inserts that help it keep aligned. I'm just going to put it in there loose for now so that I can line it up to the pipe. The great thing about this wheel right here is if you're in a situation where you're in a tight space, say on a job site somewhere, you can move that wheel from either side. You can also order an extra wheel if you want to use pressure from both sides and put that on both sides and use it, say, in your fab shop. This has really created a great opportunity for contractors to fab in their shop before they go to the job site. Saves a lot of time, gives them an element where in their own space where they have it controlled and not being on the job site where something crazy could happen. At the same time, we know that people have gone into water closets, things of that nature, where they've gotten this machine to fit there so they could put in an outlet in an area where they didn't realize they were going to need to originally. So there's these guides right here that we slide some adapters from the heater into it. And what that's going to allow us to do is whenever it's ready for him to pull it away, it's going to assist. He doesn't have to worry about moving it back and forth and moving around some molten material. This is going to pull it straight out, and that's going to help him. Right now, he's just trying to get his melt on his pipe and on his fitting, using the wheel to put that pressure on it, looking for his initial beat up. And this is all visual now, so yeah. I'm just watching the pipe. Notice I don't have to hold the heater because those heater brackets are doing that. That's for right. Me. The heater brackets, saving time, saving effort. See, he's going to move the, the wheel over as an example of how easy it is. Keep in mind, this is a productivity demonstration, so Anthony's getting ready on the next machine while Jesse will finish this up. There is a locking mechanism right here for whatever you get down into your cool time for the fusion to develop and actually become one piece with the pipe that you can lock it in place. Okay, I'm ready. You ready? All right, we're ready. He's pulled it up. As you can see, the brackets were able to pull the heater up for him. And now he just brings the two beads together in the molten state. And we're going to the cool time, aren't we, Jesse? Going to the cool time. we got about three minutes. So All right. instead of wasting that time, Anthony's ready to go on our next All right, we're going to show you over here what Anthony's doing. All Anthony, right. tell us a little bit about what you're going to do. Yeah, just like Jesse said, this is productivity, so we're moving straight on to the next one. As you can see, we've got our polygon here. We've also got our data logger hooked up to our polygon since it is a hydraulic machine. And instead of doing a bunch of talking, since we're trying to be productive, I'm just going to go right into the process, and you can kind of walk them through it. Okay, absolutely. So the polygon, it is a butt fusion machine that can butt fuse 63 millimeter all the way up to 160 millimeter. Now, the great thing here, a cordless drill comes with the drill on the facer mechanism, and it comes with two batteries. You can work on a job site all day long. If the battery goes dead, you take another one off the, off the charger, you put it back on, you put the dead one on the charger, you're constantly able to work. 
All right, he's taking a nice uh, little bit of face off each one. As you can see, we're doing a miter on this. This one happens to be a 30 degree miter. You can do up to 45 degrees in mitering on this machine. No other machine in this space in the marketplace can do a miter that's up to 45 degrees. We also have a nice, easily accessible hand wheel that opens and closes it. And the way we've built the drive rod for this, it, it allows us to open and close it faster than other machines in the marketplace in this space. And that allows you to be able to meet your open and close time, which is very important. Anthony's lining it up. See, it's data logger compatible. It's going to have a traditional 2.6 facer. It might look just a little bit different to you. It's got a uh, uh, brake release on it that allows you to quickly remove it from the mechanism during the fusion process. And it's also a safety feature. These outer jaws on both sides can be taken off if you have some sort of fitting or special miter that's already on it. So you can fuse with just two jaws. And he's going to go to his beat up right now. As you can see, the pressure gauge here that he's looking at, uh, he's probably looking at the data logger, but the pressure gauge right here is a, is a traditional McElroy pressure gauge. It's not like you'd see on some of the machines in this space. It's going to give you a true sense of the pressure that's going on in there as we're trying to get our heat soak, and it's going to hold pressure very well for us. This is a non-back drivable system, so where you're at, wherever you leave it and you set it, it's going to be able to sit there. As you come up to molten material, you will have to make an adjustment because that molten material is moving. All and right, Jeff, we just hit our heat soak time. So like we said, this is a productivity demo, so we're going to keep on rolling here. All right, great. The next step is Jesse. Now we're coming up on our end of our cool time for this uh, outlet fusion, so I'm starting to take the tool off of here. And All right. I'm actually going to go ahead and take this piece here and walk over to our smart fab. All right. And start our next fusion over there. That is a great looking fusion. So we're going to the smart fab. Just follow me right over here. How's it going, Anthony? It's going good. Heat good. soak is looking good. All right. So the smart fab. I said this is a workhorse machine, and it is. We see this in fab shops and people using this in pre-production, people using it on the job site. For pipelining, it is the best machine you can use because you don't have to take the pipe and the fittings out and switch sides with it. All you have to do is flip the heater around with our special heater mechanism. You can flip it, change the middle inserts, and within 30 seconds, you're pipelining to the next to the next piece. You don't have to worry about taking hot 500 degree heater heads off and flipping them around or taking a big piece of pipeline and moving it to the other side. That's really important for pipelining. Another great thing about this is you can put long pieces in this and obviously with the assistance of, of uh, pipe stands, it's nice and sturdy. You're going to move it on the job side. It's not going to tip until your inserts here are going to give you a nice, even tightening on there from both sides. You don't have to worry about ovaling on this machine. We have eliminated ovaling with the smart fab, half inch all the way up to four inch socket fusions. You don't have to worry about thin jaws flaring out either because this runs all the way through the base on each jaw, goes all the way through the base of this wall. So the sturdiness of this is going to keep those jaws in place. And whenever you start to close it together, it's not going to flare out like you've seen in other models. Jesse, how are we doing here? Uh, easy enough. I've already got us into our heat soak time here. I've got about 40 seconds to go. OK, great. So um, while we're sitting here waiting, I, I don't know if you noticed how easy that was for me to set up. Yeah. This is built in. The stab depths are built in. There's standoffs that are built in, so I don't have to do any stab depth marking or anything like that. How, how, it's already all ready to go. So. Yeah, you have a depth star right here. So that marks where, uh, whether you're a 63 millimeter, or 125 millimeter, whatever you're, you need. Uh, you don't have to mark the pipe. Of course, you may need to mark the pipe depending on what type of inspectors on the job site. But if you inform them that you're using a smart fab, you can let them know how that, uh, that operates and show them that the, the stab depth mark won't need to be there simply because you got the, you've got the depth star. Kay. How are we doing, Jesse? I'm ready to go. So All I'm right. going to unlock this. 
uh, position lock here and go ahead and pull my heater and that is self-stripping so it comes right out of there and then I'm going to fuse it back together roll those beads up right where they need to be excellent bring two beads together set my lock and I'm in the cool time on this one we got about four minutes so okay. while we're letting this one uh, cool we're going to do like we normally do and move on to the next thing move on to the next one Anthony still needs to finish his fusion okay so. Anthony let's check this out Absolutely, what are we doing? Jeff. So we just hit our full heat soak time. And we're ready to go ahead and get this heater out of here okay. and get these two pipe ends back together. All right. <clears throat> nice and easy. Open and close. Doesn't take as long. There we go. Brings it up. For that first 30 seconds or so, because that molten state moves a little bit, he's got to monitor that with his hand. After about 30 to 45 seconds, it starts to set in, and you only have to adjust about every 15 to 20 seconds over the next minute or two. And then after that, it, you may not have to adjust at all. So it looks like that pressure is starting to level out right around our fusion pressure that, that's called out. Um, so once that levels out, we can go ahead and move on to the next one, and then we keep keep our job site going here. Okay, so he's going to monitor this, make sure uh, he gets the the fusion time, the cool time down. And Jesse, what are we going to do next? Yep, um, back on the other side of the show here, and we're going to go ahead and start on our small outlet. So we're going to put a 25 millimeter outlet on a 63 millimeter main now. Okay. And this is all going to become part of our spool piece. So I've already got my Hornet mounted, uh, similar to the way we did it on the Hornet XL, and I'm going to go ahead and drill my hole. So this drill uh, is Again, something that is provided by uh, the, the user, um, and it keeps everything nice and straight and in line. So I'll go ahead so, and run this hole right through there. So if you're, you, if you're building some sort of manifold, uh, something pre-production wise, it's really good to try to line things up evenly. And as you can see, just like the larger Hornet, the Hornet XL, this Hornet's gonna help you align that drill bit n nicely into the pipe, and then whenever you bring your, your heat adapter peg down in it, it's going to have the same angle. It's really important because if you don't have that, you could have some misalignment whenever you bring the heater down, and that's where a leak path could be created. Right now, he's just checking to make sure that the outlet is straight in the puck. And, and he'll bring Tightening his, this knob down is what makes that expansion yeah. plug uh, expand and <clears throat> hold on to that that fitting. Another great thing about this is if you want to go ahead and install the system or you've installed the system and need an outlet later, putting this up overhead, which is just shy of 15 pounds, gives you the leverage you need to be up there and have one person operate it with the heater and the machine open and closing it. This is going to give you the mechanical advantage so you don't have to have two people or have to have, you know, a hammer, a piece of wood, whatever else, a crane, I don't know. But this is going to help you pretty much be aligned and have a one-man operation. Right now, it's all visual. He's looking for his melt on both sides, and then he's going to open it up and close it down. This has an open and close and a lock position, so there's a three-way position right there. This cannot be opened now unless he changes it to the neutral where it goes up and down or the open position where it can only go up. That is correct. And we've got this fused. So uh, we've got about a minute cool time on this one. And, um, you know, some of the nice things about this tool while we sit here and wait for that minute is uh, yeah, this tool is not necessarily about about speed, but about consistency. Right. You know, especially building manifolds, like you mentioned, anything that needs to come out nice and straight and aligned correctly, yeah. this tool really helps with that. Yeah. So it's something that uh, is really invaluable when you're trying to make things come out correct. Right. Now we're gonna do the, the, the other way that you can do that is by hand, which I'm about to do a hand socket fusion now. And I'm gonna go ahead and start <coughs> prepping that while we're waiting on this one minute. So we're gonna do that with our cold ring tools. Okay. Um, somewhere right here, I stashed a piece of pipe, thank you. Um, and to start that off, the first thing I'm gonna do is chamfer it with the chamfer tool. There's a little razor blade in there. And what that does is cut a nice little angled end on that pipe. And it also acts as a stab depth measuring tool. So I'm gonna set my cold ring clamp, these cold ring pliers right up against the base of that. 
and now that becomes my stab depth. Right. So it keeps everything aligned for me uh, and makes it really easy to get everything right where I want it. Then I'm going to socket fuse right into this outlet that we just put on. So we probably have a few seconds left here before we hit our, okay. hit our cool time. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking the, the hornet off of here. <clears throat> hornet just... is re really easy to apply. Uh, it's very important to be uh, trained on our machines. Uh, going into things. Uh, a lot of people can try to use guesswork to use them, but we highly recommend uh, to be trained on these machines, and we do have new qualified operator training for McElroy equipment that uh, we hope you've checked out, or we hope you plan to check out that presentation as well. All right, takes it off. Get He's already prepped right here. He's already chamfered his, his pipe. He's already marked his depth gauge, and now he's going to take his heater. And we'll do this hand socket fusion. And what he's going to be able to do whenever he brings this pipe down onto the outlet this cold ring tool is going to make it square. All right, we hear a lot of people talk about how they don't like the snaking look uh, between, you know, a long run of a smaller size pipe, half inch up to an inch and a half, or, you know, something that looks like it's at an angle when it's coming out of a pipe. This cold ring tool is going to help you square this up against the square end of your fitting or your outlet and make sure that it looks straight. Yep. Notice I'm not using a level, right? Uh, no bullet level. Um, didn't have to make any adjustments uh, for back, forth, left, right. Right. That cold ring tool makes sure that it's straight every time. Absolutely. So now this is cooling off, and you probably didn't notice through the camera, but while I've been working on this, Anthony has been getting our two big spool pieces prepped for our fusion overhead over here. So That's let's, productivity let's right there, my friends. If you follow us over here while well, Jesse takes that out, Anthony's been working hard to get these pieces up in the rack. That's right. That's right, Jeff. So right now, yeah, I'm just trying to get my pieces of pipe aligned and right where I want them. Uh, so we can go ahead and throw our Acrobat 160 and our Spider 125 up here and make those final two fusions of this demo. All right. So, Jesse, what's next? First thing we need to do is get him his fusion tool, right? So uh, I'm going to take this and break it down to a three-jaw configuration just really quick. Now, look how quick this is, folks. It doesn't take 15 minutes with different hand tools to try to take it off the base, 15 or 20 minutes, and it's not heavy at all, and it takes one person to just hand it to another person who's on a ladder, and that took maybe 10 seconds for Jesse to get it off the base and get it over to Anthony. Another great thing that you can look at here is how close that fitting is on the socket fusion is to one jaw of the Acrobat. Because of the way it's designed, you can get in tight, close-knit spaces. Those jaws will allow you to fuse on things like tees, flanges, and elbows. <clears throat> Just making some adjustments. The jaws on the Acrobat are extremely light. If you're in a really tight spot, you can take them off. You can use a D10 pin, pop it out, take off a jaw, and slide the Acrobat around the pipe to get it in place, and then pop them back in. Inserts for the Acrobat that go down to 125 millimeter. Actually, we've heard some people fusing all the way down to 63 millimeter. So there are inserts available to fuse in the lower sizes down to 63 millimeter. The same inserts that go inside the Acrobat are the same inserts that go inside the Polygon. We made it as easy as, pop as possible for people to utilize their accessories between different machines so they can, they can be as productive as possible on the job site. So what, what Jesse has done here is he's, he's given the HPU hoses to Anthony. He's in a position where he's going to be able to put the facer in overhead, but it's designed where you could put the facer underneath the pipe if need be. In this particular situation, he doesn't need to worry 
about going under because he's got the space overhead. Ready? You ready to close? Now, he could also orient the pipe where the facer was sticking out towards the camera as well. Doing everything he can to get to the stops, making sure it gets squared off. In this particular situation, we've got two people operating. You have someone manning the HPU. The facer and the heater are plugged into the HPU. It's got a smart power management system that allows you to have one plug for the HPU and the other two components without having to uh, draw any more power than needed just to run the HPU. Smart power management system draws the minimum amount of power needed to run all three. Going closed. Okay. Right now they're going into their alignment phase. Check and drag actually right now. I'm oh, gonna make sure check the and drag, drag is All right. right where we want it. That looks there pretty you go, good. You're barely you <laughs> yep. Checking drag in hangers is important because depending upon where another bead might sit or how a hanger might be tilted back and forth, it could Don't affect close. drag. Okay. So you want to make sure to check drag every single time you can when you're up in hangers. And I don't know if you noticed, but I entered that on my data logger, and now I've got to set my fusion pressure up at 108 PSI. So I'm going to bump those pipe ends together and run it up to 108. How are we looking on alignment? Everything good? Look good. Okay, right there. I'm going to bump that together one time, make sure it doesn't slip yeah. for me. We're good. Good. Always important to check for slippage. Okay, let me get you your heater. So they've gone through their alignment. They've gone through their drag. Sorry. Got right. it. Yep. They check the heater temperature, make sure it's in the right spot, make sure the pipe's clean. And now they're going okay, into their beat in. up. Okay, let me get my data logger squared away here. Going closed. Okay. Okay, let me know when we got that one millimeter bead. Okay. One millimeter bead, about the width of a dime. Once they get that, they will go through their shift sequence and Jesse will move it to drag pressure. Go ahead. Good. Okay, I'm gonna Which do is your shift heat sequence. Make sure the HPU goes all the way down to drag pressure, which is your heat soak pressure. And then he will okay, and there go to my neutral. heat soak starts. We got about four minutes. So like usual, whenever we have time, we're yep. going to start on something else. All right. So we're gonna get our spider up here for our final fusion. I'll let you get that. Right Again, there. being productive as possible. We're going through a heat soak on one machine. We're gonna go do a fusion on another. This is a spot where, Paul, you could probably zoom in a little bit so everybody can see exactly what he's doing there. Jesse uh, is working on something else while Anthony is getting the spider attached to the outlet that Jesse earlier fused on with the Hornet XL. He's trying to get the edges of that up against the fitting stop. Tighten it up. Okay. We good? Yep. Now he's ready for his heater. Okay, so this piece that we fused up earlier with our 25 mil outlet on our 63, that's going to be our final fusion to fuse in with our spider. So did you hear that? That's going to be the final fusion. This okay. is the... Te technically, the butt fusion will be our final fusion. Okay. we got to fuse it after we do the spider, but Correct. it's the last yeah. one we're setting up. So this is fusion number six. And I'm so. keeping an eye on our, on our heat soak time using our data logger timer. And we have plenty of time. This is only going to take him a couple of minutes. Yeah, on a 63 millimeter, it's roughly... Got my heater, Jesse. Oh, sorry. Yep. <laughs> if we're taking too long, it's my fault because I'm not paying attention 63 to 63 millimeters, roughly about 24 seconds on the heat Thank soak. You. 
this is the same type of socket fusion that I did by hand a minute ago. He's just doing it up in place with the spider. See, when you have tools like the Smart Fab and the Spider, you have a great production tool, and then you have a great tie-in tool. You could even start use working with the Spider at the end of the Smart Fab in production to gain even more advantages of finishing faster. You could do the same thing if you have the spider jaws on the polygon on yep. and use a spider off the edge of that. Imagine trying to do this by hand or with a machine that's more than 15 pounds. It's kind of difficult. The spider changes everything overhead, more so than any other machine in its space in the industry. The non-back drivable mechanism in the spider is going to hold it in place after he brings those two beads together, the bead on the outlet and the bead on the pipe. And there we go. Now we're back to the heat soak on our Acrobat. And Jesse, how close are we? Yeah, we are about 15 seconds out on so our heat soak time. So folks, folks, as soon as he opens this up, as soon as he opens this up, he's going to close it, and we will go into the cool time on our seventh fusion in a, about 30 to 35 minutes. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah, I'm going open. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, there's our fusion. I'm going to reset my timer on my data logger, and I've got about four minutes or so on... A cool time, and at that point, because we are it's supported, done. And yes. So the cool time on this would be about 7:30 on the DVS 2017 standard, but because it's in hangers and it's supported, we can remove it in about half that time. Of course, we data logged it. We data logged it for the Acrobat. We data logged it on the Polygon. We walked you through fusions with the Hornet XL, with the Hornet, the Polygon, the Smart Fab, the Spider, Cold Ring and Chamfer Tool, six different machines, one hand tool, seven fusions. In what was our final time? Final time, roughly 30 to 35 minutes. So folks, that's productivity. We showed you how to plan on a job site because you want to go into a job site planning, knowing where everything is going to be. That's what these guys did. Pre-planning is definitely key. Pre you know, we already had all of our measurements taken. We already knew exactly where our fusions needed to go on the pipe. We already knew what our angles needed to be. So all that stuff's done ahead of time, allowed us to be that quick once we got out here and got ready right. to work. And that's what we did last year too. We showed you what pre-planning can do for, for you. You can learn all about that. You want to be a qualified operator. You want to make sure that you reach out to us and say, hey, if you have a question about how you can be as productive as possible, we're willing to help. We're willing to let you know what we would do in certain situations. But we're, we're thankful that you joined us today. And uh, Jesse, Anthony, great job. Thank this you. was fantastic. You, and uh, so if, if you have any questions, please let us know. We're, we're here to answer. So thanks a lot for joining us. Welcome back, guys. Hey. Looks like we're all done here. Um, Good afternoon. Great, great, great job. That was that was pretty cool. I, I uh, you know, Jeff, you and I did the the presentation where you're talking about game shows. I, there were times I felt like I was watching a game show. It was kind of exciting. Uh, yeah, so. it was. It was. Uh, you know, you get kind of hot and sweaty moving around like that. Anthony, <laughs> I don't know if you're tired from that, but uh, <laughs> you and Jesse were certainly doing the lion's share of the work there. But. Um, you know, it's, it's really kind of fun. And, you know, we've heard people tell us when we're doing our productivity demonstrations, when we're practicing it or whenever we were, you know, we're actually going through uh, the process for a presentation like that. People say, it looks like you're having fun. And honestly, it is kind of fun. It is a bunch of fun going yeah. through those demos like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it is. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. Um, you know, last year, for those of you that were here, uh, 
when we had uh, our, our last year, 2019 uh, infusion, you got to see a productivity demonstration with two acrobats where we did, I believe, five or six. Six fusions six last year. Six fusions yeah. last year, one being a vertical fusion. Uh, and we did that within 40 minutes. And, and the timing for this, we did this set up in about 30 34 minutes. Actually, I believe had we allowed that last joint to cool half the cool time, it would have been right at 34 and a half minutes. So that was seven fusions with yep. six machines and one hand tool, which was the chamfer tool that we did in 34 minutes. And it's all about pre-production. It's all about pre-planning. So to show you how efficient that is. Yeah, really a testament to how quick you can work with these tools once you have the right setup mm -hmm. working. Yeah. So I, uh, Paul, I'm, I'm, uh, going to let you uh, throw out some questions for us. I'm sure there's some out there from people who got to watch the presentation. There are. I've, I've got a few in, and I, I've asked Anthony to kind of keep an eye on his end as well so, uh, so we can make sure we get all the questions in. But, uh, um, you know, some pretty impressive tools there, and it was a, a, a good mix of both the, um, you know, productivity tools, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the prefab tools, and then also what people would use, like, uh, in place. Do you have any feel for like as polypropylene becomes more adopted, how how much people are prefabbing, how much they're doing in place, and 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 then really in the context of this video, how much that, how much using just one or the other may affect productivity? Well, we see people more and more doing prefabrication work, whether it's on the job site or back at their shop, simply because they're getting more comfortable with the idea of using polypropylene. And as they get more experience and they take more, you know, they have more job opportunities, they're seeing the value of doing that work inside the shop and then taking it out and on the job site and actually uh, uh, installing it. So, um, yes, absolutely. We're seeing productivity more and more. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Um, you know, so, yeah, Anthony, do you have some questions there? I, I am. I'm trying to switch over to the next one here real quick and, and uh, it flipped out on me again. So I'm getting, uh, yep. getting back Go ahead in here. I got those pulled up now. Um, we got a question here. It says, how would the how would the productivity demo be affected if there was more workers? Would productivity increase? Well, uh, certainly the, the more well, it, more people doesn't always mean, you know, more productive work. Sometimes it means you're less productive because you have more people on the job site and some people are standing around. The way this was done, the way this was set up, even last year when we did the fusions with two people doing the six fusions in 40 minutes with the Acrobat and then this year the seven fusions in 35 minutes, uh, two people w was plenty to get the job done much faster. If you, talk, if you talk to a welder and see how fast that they could do seven welds in, in, you know, in a day or how fast they could do that, you know, even with prefab prep work, they're not going to be able to tie that in overhead the way our guys did it uh, in that demonstration today. So uh, productivity means you're being uh, conscious of the number of people that are on the job site, as well as how quickly you can get the job done and get it done right. So more people wouldn't necessarily mean more productivity. The idea is more machines are going to be more productivity with the right number of people. Absolutely, Jeff. And you were kind of talking a minute ago about how, um, as compared to some traditional materials, welders, things like that, kind of playing off that a little bit. When we're talking about polypropylene, kind of one of its advantages is it's, it's, it's lightweight as compared to those traditional piping materials. How is, that, how is that going to help you be productive on a job site out there, especially overhead with places like where the Acrobat can go? Well, I can tell you I was on a campus one time where they were re replacing all the lines. They were refurbishing the entire building. And um, one of our uh, steel competitors came to the job site, seeing all the polypropylene on the job site, walked up to the attic, asked the site super supervisor, like, why did you go with this instead of our stuff? He said, I'll tell you why. Because I'd have taken two days just to get all your stuff up here. And mm -hmm. it took me one morning to get all this pipe up here. So I saved a day and a half and I was already started on the job. Plus, as I move your stuff, meaning our, our steel competitor, as I move your stuff around, mm -hmm. it still takes more people for me to do that. Whereas I have fewer people that I need to move the pipe around to get it in position. Again, being more productive. Just the, the fact that it's lighter weight, it's one-fifth the weight of steel, is going to give you more productivity. Absolutely. Um, we got another one coming in here. Um, 
as we mentioned in the video, Jesse had talked about um, um, how we how we pre-planned our job site, how we kind of had things kind of put out where we want to go. Um, how important is that when you're going out to a job? And is that going to improve with the more polypropylene jobs that you get on? Well, yeah, I mean, I, it is. The, the more you do, the, the better experience it's going to be. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, th- what we did in that demonstration today was specific to just trying to to put as many tools in play as possible. That wasn't necessarily a a real life spool piece, but what it showed you is, you know, I could do that. I could get the same results out of a smart fab and a couple of spiders or uh, a couple of acrobats and a polygon or the acrobats and a hornet or two uh, or the smart fab and the spider and a hornet. So what we're trying to show you is how quickly you can get that done with just two people. Absolutely. Um, so another thing we want to touch on real quick that's coming through in our, in our box here is um, in, our, in our demonstration that we just went through, we also had those DL6 hooked up. So kind of more of a comment than a question um, you might be able to expand on a little bit is even with data loggers in play, you can still be very productive on a job site and be capturing all of that data and bringing it back with you and also maintaining that good workflow throughout the day. Yeah, so as you can see, we had qualified operators working on this particular operation, right? So uh, the the use of the data loggers were, I mean, the, the steps that you guys took to do that were almost insignificant in the process. It was just part of the process and it didn't slow them down at all. Uh, when you have that and it doesn't add any extra time, now you have truly, uh, you know, more uh, uh, data that's logged on, on the process, on, on the data that you have is now in place in the vault where you can go back and look at it. If there's a failure later, did the right parameters, uh, were they followed? Um, so we, we had the qualified operator uh, presentation yesterday and since you're registered, you can go back and watch that on demand. Uh, data logging is part of the operator qualifications now for polypropylene. It's, very, it's a very valuable tool to have. And it didn't take any time at all for them to use the data logger in that process. And if you're a qualified operator, you know, that's an important piece to have. It's going to be valuable for the owner. It's going to be valuable for the engineers. Uh, it's val- valuable for you as an installer uh, to have that. Uh, because, you know, you want to make sure that you say, I did the process right. And as a distributor, it gives you another sale opportunity or another rental opportunity to put that on the job site. Absolutely. And we got another one coming in here. Um, Once again, kind of more of a comment than a question. Um, It's kind of talking about um, how lightweight the kind of the polypropylene line of equipment is and kind of how that plays into productivity. So, kind of going into like the Acrobat and the Hornet, how lightweight they are. Not only is that going to keep you productive by not having to bring, lug around a bunch of big of a, big equipment mm-hmm. and wearing down your operators, it's going to be able to keep you moving um, day in and day out with those lightweight pieces of equipment. Yeah, so when you look at what we've been able to do in nine years and develop a whole line specifically for polypropylene uh, without worrying about you know any other types of material, Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're fortunate that we have a lot of these machines that can cross over to HDPE as well. But you think about what we did. We designed an entire line from half inch all the way up to 24 inch. That's lightweight and easy to move toolless machines where it doesn't take you 20 minutes to get a machine off the base, you know, potentially lose parts and pieces to it. It doesn't take two or three people to lift it up into place. You both were able to, to manage those machines yourselves and get them in place overhead that's the key to being productive and we've had you know a great uh, advantage to have our engineers here in north america to be able to listen to your needs and put out what is going to be best for the end user absolutely yeah you saw how fast that acrobat came off that skid and straight up into yeah. the into the hangers like that less than 15 seconds off Very the quick. skid. I'm, 15 seconds is is, if you're taking your time, much, yeah. yeah. So um, that's all I'm seeing on my side, Paul. Are you seeing anything else? Yeah, on yours? I, I've got just a couple more here. So one was, uh, you know, you talked about the data logger earlier. And uh, obviously, uh, for this particular job, you were using the data logger six. So uh, data logger seven, uh, great new tool, um, still compatible with uh, the Acrobat line and, and will all the polypropylene specs be loaded in there just like it has been. 
Oh yeah, nothing will change. Everything, everything with the DL7 is going to have everything that the DL6 has. Great. So just bigger, bigger, better, faster, all that good stuff. Yep. Perfect. And then, <laughs> Battery you know, power. Yeah, yeah, that's probably that's a that's a big one too, and and uh, be great, especially when you're working in a building where they haven't probably turned on the electricity yet. Sometimes. Right. So you know, new builds. Um, and then the last one I have is really kind of as much a, a, a comment and somebody uh, commented here that they, they haven't used a whole lot of polypropylene, but um, we're real impressed with, they like the overhead shot view and we're able to see Anthony as he pulled the pipe out of the smart fab. Um, really just kind of asking about if you have any, and, and Anthony, if you remember any idea about how long that is, because that you seem to be handling that without any problem. And that's, you know, compared to other pipe materials, that's, you know, you could carry it, but it's still pretty heavy. Yeah, absolutely. That was probably about a 12 to 15 foot length of pipe that I was pulling out of that smart fab right there. And that was kind of like playing into what we were talking about earlier as compared to traditional materials. I was able to lift that piece of pipe up easily and get that up over into the hangers without having to exert much energy at all. It's a very lightweight material. So that's kind of the beauty of, of polypropylene. Yeah, that's great. Well, you know, that, that's all I've got at this end. Let me take one last quick look, make sure I didn't miss anything else here. But um, yeah, that's all I've got here. Otherwise, great job, guys. Um, you know, you know, the overhead shot was was nice. People commented on it was great to see the, you know, the relative close quarters that everyone was in and still be able to pull all that off with all that equipment. So, um, yeah, Appreciate otherwise, hey, great job. And, um, you know, Paul, I just, yeah, yeah, I, just want, I just want everybody to know if you have any further questions, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us, uh, email us. If you have a job coming up where you want some I ideas or advice on how to set up uh, pre-production, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We want to help. We want to provide the best answers for you. And, uh, you know, part, part of being able to understand the best answers and best practices, too, would be to be a qualified operator. So don't forget that's new for polypropylene that's going to be on the calendar going into 2021. And plus some of our partners out in the field, industry partners, channel partner, too, perhaps, will be announcing that they'll have some opportunities to do that through them as well. So uh, there's a lot of things that we can do to help you to, to establish a, an opportunity to be as productive as possible and, and let us be that resource for you. No, it's great. Great wrap up on that. And uh, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Just, you know, if anybody has any questions that either we either we've missed or that have coming up, uh, you know, after you maybe watch this again later, uh, just let us know. We'll get you taken care of. Otherwise, again, guys, great job. Awesome presentation. A lot of fun to watch. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us today and uh, enjoy the rest of the confusion. Thanks, guys. See you.